close. Watch for the exact moments the skills on your hotbars lose the red X icon and start letting you use them. This is max melee range. Internalize this distance as best you can. You can't always sit at it at all times because auto attacks have a shorter range, but when a boss has an AoE around them, or gives everyone AoEs on the players to spread out, check max melee range first. This is the ultimate answer to needing distance as a melee to dodge, without losing your ability to ABC, not your ranged attacks. Your ranged attacks don't break combos as a Vendwalker, but that doesn't make them any better for your average play. There usually isn't enough time to use a ranged attack, even when dodging some of the larger AoEs. If you did have time, you probably left too early. Even when you need to step out, you don't need to step out for long. The game works on a three-fourths rule, essentially. Only the last fourth of a cast bar matters. Dodge out of the AoE right before the moment the cast bar is going to hit 75% completion, and then move back in the moment the cast bar finishes and the orange circle vanishes. You do not need to wait for the animation. Just walk back in once the indicators are gone. Attacks where the animation is what matters is almost exclusively when there's no ground indicator. The only indicator otherwise is the cast bar, and those can lead to cast only or animation only. So your time spent away from the enemy is very little in every situation. And even in the cases where you have to go far and there is theoretically time to use the ranged attack, gap closers, Every melee has them. Ninja has the hardest one to use, I'd say, but you all have gap closers. The moment the orange marker disappears, hit the button. You are now in range of the boss and able to use a good attack instead. It could take practice to use some of the gap closers, Shikuchi especially, like I said, but they're worth spending time learning how to use. And then there's also attacks that act as gap closers, like Dragoon's everything, Spine Shatter, Dragonfire Dive, or even Star Diver. You can learn where to delay one of these by a few seconds just to use the gap closing effects, but you also have to learn where not to hold them for too long. It's a balancing act, but one that once you've learned, can make you way more mobile than you already were. I'm gonna say it one last time, don't run away every single time even the tiniest marker or mechanic happens. It's probably the biggest mistake I see most melee players make. Keep your uptime on the boss. You have a lot more available than you think. And if you're still having trouble, still use sprint. It's not just a skill for moving outside of combat. You can use it in combat and you can use it to dodge better. And you should. Dangerous last second dodges aren't last second if you're moving faster. This is especially good for those large AoEs you are so afraid of. You move out and back in at a much more blazing pace. Sprint is a utility to be used, not ignored like most people seem to. Let's take a moment to talk about something mostly unique to mages, but some other jobs do have casted skills. That is to say, let's talk about slide casting. Slide casting is abusing the fact that this is an MMO. Due to latency, there is a delay between when the game sees you moving locally and the server's understanding that you are moving. If you have 200 ping, that's 0.2 seconds of latency. So if you try to move when there's less than 0.2 seconds left in a cast, the cast will still complete. This is what slide casting is. The numbers aren't what is important. You can't check your ping in game anyway, but the point is the higher your ping, the more you can slide cast. But even if you have little to no ping, you can still slide cast. There's some built in tolerance, even if only a little bit of it. And the more you slide cast, the more you can move and cast, which means more casts in general and more casts means higher DPS. Now this is something you guys taught me. There's a trick to learning how to slide cast. Take an emote, any emote, and put it on your hotbar somewhere. Maybe one of your extra bars so you don't hit it by accident. 
While casting, it will darken and not be usable. But the moment the emote lights up, you can start slide casting. This should make your slide cast learning a lot smoother until you've internalized the timing. The harder the fight, the more casting you will gain compared to easier fights. The more movement required, the more movement will punish you. Utilities for movement are limited, even for Red Mage and Summoner. But if you can apply slide casting, you'll potentially be able to spread out those utilities more, or use them for purely more DPS. You may have also noticed in watching other people play, they do something like I do. With all this key mashing. This isn't for fun. Well, not entirely. It's not for being fancy either. It's to do ABC better. I'd recommend saving yourself the pain and not actually mashing this much. Just learn why we are mashing this much. This is ability queuing. Much like slide casting lets you finish a spell, ability queuing lets you cast sooner. And this is something all the rules makes use of, not just those with lengthy cast timers. For say, half a second before your GCD finishes spinning, the window for queuing opens. So if you hit a button before you can actually use the skill, the game will recognize you hit the button still and activate the skill the moment the GCD finishes. So while you don't need to mash the keys, you should learn to press the buttons earlier than you might think you need to. If you wait until only after the buttons light back up, you're losing a lot of time and a lot of damage. There's also the idea of weaving. Global cooldowns all share a 2.5 second cooldown. Cooldown abilities, offensive or defensive, are off global cooldowns. They do not cycle when using a GCD. So if you use an OGCD between GCDs, this is called weaving. And you can weave up to two times between global cooldowns. Consider there to be two weaving windows between every global. Each window can contain one skill. However, consider that the win of the button press matters a lot for weaving due to animations. So let's do a mini exercise. Take your global cooldown's recast timer. The base cooldown is 2.5 seconds. Cut this in half and we get two weaving windows of 1.25 seconds. However, let's split it in half again so we have four pieces. Each one is 0.62 seconds, and ignore the extra millisecond that's gone missing. Now, consider every weave to take up one and a half windows. If you queue your skills up as soon as you can, hitting the keys the moment your GCD goes off, your two weaves will line up, say, like this. You still have that half a second of leeway at the end, but if you, say, wait a window, and then some before you use an ability, but still weave two skills back to back, the weaves extend beyond the window and clip into your global cooldown. This is why ability queuing and properly weaving is so important, despite seeming like some super advanced topic. The earlier you get practice on pressing buttons sooner than later, the better your rotations will come out. It adds up very quickly to making you perform better. Also keep in mind, some abilities take up more weaving time. For example, all of Dragoon's jumps. They all take up at least three windows, so you will always lose time if you try to use two weaves when one of them is a jump. And then there's Star Diver, which is a... Uh, um, uh, yeah. The issue extends further for you casting players, mostly Black Mage, because you have little to no instant cast abilities. Your weaving windows are limited. Swift cast and triple cast in themselves need to be weaved, and most of your skills have cast times. You need to abuse procs and all of your instant cast skills. Otherwise, half of your weaving window, at least, will be taken up by your cast times. So while you need to weave a lot less on average, you need to focus a lot more on when you weave. It comes with the territory, and if only makes ability queuing all the more important, since you have less space time for the skills to fit in. 
Jobs with shorter GCDs than 2.5 also have less time for weaving. If your global cooldown is 2 seconds, well, you better have perfect weaving down. And stuff like Machinist's 1.5 second hypercharge GCD for Heat Blast? You can only single weave. Again, you don't need to be mashing like I tend to do, but do try and learn from my footage. It isn't just to be fancy or such, it's to make my damage come out stronger than ever. And the comfier you are with keeping your rotation going, the better a DPS you will become. This is something you'll be slowly learning over your entire time as a DPS, so don't rush it. But do make time to learn it all. Every little bit of damage you gain from the little things adds up to be a whole hell of a lot of damage when added together. Thank you for watching ABC, A Beginner's Guide to DPS. We went over many, many, many topics that will be implemented as you progress. But the more you implement, the more you improve. Take it a step at a time and follow the evolution of topics I attempted to lay out for you. The more you play, the more you learn, and the more you see how something can be used. Feel free to leave feedback or further advice for newbie DPS to know as they train themselves, or even ask questions on something you didn't understand within the video. This is here to help after all. But be sure to check the description for any added information as well. Maybe Endwalker changes more than we expect or such. Perhaps at one point I will also create a video on intermediate level DPSing. And yes, for as deep as that all seemed to go, there's way more that can be talked about. Keep an eye out for that. But the future holds many possibilities. But otherwise, take care and may the power of an Adid Hogs lay waste to your enemies. And an extra special thanks to all my patrons over on Patreon. And an extra, extra special thanks to Amen Al Khatib, Bennett Begurn, Benjamin Hahn, Crikey, mate. Ethan, Ethan Olson, James, Jericho, Kevin Lowe, Kyle Steinhauser, Mizella, Scott Stanley, T Rogue, Ticklefinger, and Valor LLC. Links down below, all that good stuff.